using the Options API and Metadata API to work with the database up until now. By using these APIs, we've avoided directly querying the database. We didn't have to create tables or insert data. While these APIs are useful, they don't provide us with everything we need. Sometimes you will have to create complex custom queries. Other times you'll have to create tables. In this lecture, we're going to create a table. This table will contain ratings for our recipes. First, we're going to create it through an interface and learn how to create it with code. Right now, I'm in PHP My Admin. This script usually comes installed with most environments or servers. I'm looking at my database that contains my WordPress installation. Right off the bat, you'll notice that every table starts with WP underscore. This is very important to note. The goal right now is to create a table with PHP My Admin's help, and you'll see why in a second. I want you to create a table called WP underscore recipe underscore ratings, and it should have four columns. I'm going to pre fill these and then go over what you should set. Pause the video for a second and fill out the form as I did. We have four fields called ID recipe underscore ID, rating, and user underscore IP. The ID is a unique ID, and this should be our primary key. The type should be BIGINT. We use BIGINT as this is what WordPress uses for their own IDs. For example, if I take a look at the posts table and look at its structure, you'll see they have the ID as B-I-G-I-N-T with a length of 20. So we're going to follow WordPress to have consistency. The recipe underscore ID will contain the ID of the post. This will also be a B-I-G-I-N-T with a length of 20. The rating will contain the actual user rating along with their user underscore IP. The collation should be set UTF-8 underscore general underscore CL. This is the collation WordPress uses, and we want to keep this consistent as well. Let's create our table now, and you should receive no errors so far. Great. I'm going to click on our table, and then go to export, and just quickly export this table. PHP My Admin should start downloading a SQL file. Let's open this file up in our text editor and you'll see the SQL needed. PHP My Admin will generate a lot of code for us, but the only thing we're interested in is the actual query that creates the table, which is right here. I'm going to go back to PHP My Admin and delete our table because we're done with it for now. I want to create this through our plugin and not through PHP My Admin. Can you guess where we would do that? If you guessed during activation, then you're correct. Let's open up the activation file and get started. The first thing I want to do is include the global variable WPDB. This variable contains an object with methods and properties for our database. This object is created by WordPress for you and is already connected to the database. I'm going to create a variable named $createSQL, and this will contain a string with our SQL. Let's copy and paste the query from our SQL file into this string like so. I'm going to format this a bit by indenting some stuff just to make it look a bit cleaner and readable. We need to modify this query a bit to be compatible and consistent with our database. First is the prefix. Not all installations of WordPress will be prefixed with WP underscore. So I want you to remove this bit and instead we're going to append a dynamic prefix. The WPDB object contains a property named prefix, and this property simply contains the prefix 
of the current WordPress installation. Next up is making the charset dynamic. The WPDB object is a method called get underscore charset underscore collate. As it sounds, this will get the collation of the currently installed DB. We don't have to make any further modifications to our SQL query. All we have to do now is execute it. You may be thinking that there's a method in the WPDB object for doing this, but there isn't. Strangely enough, WordPress doesn't include a create table method. Instead, we have to use a different function. I'm going to require a file inside the forward slash wp dash admin forward slash includes forward slash upgrade dot php file. I also appended this to a constant named abspath. This constant is created by WordPress and points to the root installation of our WordPress site. We have to include this file so we can use a function called dbdelta. This file usually isn't loaded, so we have to load it. The dbdelta function is used for executing queries that modify our database. I'm going to pass this function our query, and we're done. Let's deactivate our plugin and then reactivate it. You should not get any errors. Go back to phpMyAdmin and you should see our recipe rating table pop up again. I know this can seem a bit confusing, but working with the database is actually easier than this. 95% of the time, you won't have to worry about requiring certain files. It's just that when you create tables, you have to. WordPress provides a lot of methods for executing queries and takes care of sanitizing your queries for you. So I promise creating a query like this is a one-time thing. If you're interested in learning more about this process, then I provide a link to a WordPress Codex page that provides details about this.